Logs on looking like a doc. Got my logs on looking like a doc. Got my logs on looking like a doc. You bring the army and the navy looking stop me. Got my logs on. Got my logs on. Got my logs on looking like a doc. Yes, yes, yes. I'm back here, here with the one and only Jazzy J here on Hawk Radio. Like I said before, I'm back. Got a bunch of hot topics going on. Be going over with y'all. Yes, I said the TLC movie casting has been released, but do you want to know who is going to be playing T Boz, Left Eye, and Chili? I'm going to tell you that after the break. Also, Beyonce had her documentary, Life is But a Dream. That came on HBO, and I know a lot of y'all don't have cable. So, after a couple more songs, I'm going to be sitting there telling you all about Beyonce. And also, this ticket fiasco that's been going on with her sales lately. Um, her concert, Miss Carter Tour, you know, the, the, the tour is going to be starting soon. And they have pre-release tickets going on, and there's people... Complaining about the prices, is people, is companies buying out her tickets and then reselling it. I don't know if that's illegal, but that's just what's been going on, um, allegedly. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff that's going on. So just stay tuned. You're right here. You're here with the one and only Jazzy J. I'm gonna play some more music for you guys so you guys can be prepared for the hot topics I'm gonna be running down. And we'll be right back. I'm gonna play some Montel Jordan for y'all. Hey, gonna go through a couple of hot topics for you. How are you doing tonight? And how many of you guys checked out Beyonce's brand new documentary that came on Saturday night at 9 p.m.? It was called Life is But a Dream, and it's basically was talking about all of her life, you know, her entire life story from childhood, how she got in Destiny's Child, and how she became everybody's musical icon, Beyonce. Um, it, it does an in-depth look into her life, her relationship with Jay-Z. If a lot of y'all missed it, you know, we kind of missed out. But, it, I mean, it wasn't as much to, for anyone to miss. Pretty much it just showed her everyday life going back and forth between uh, performing, dancing, having her rehearsals and stuff like that going on. Uh, the good news is Beyonce broke another record on HBO. She had broke the record for the largest audience for HBO Doc, um, reaching 1.8 million viewers recently. Because a lot of people that even though they don't, even though they have cable, they cannot connect to HBO because you have to order those stations. And me, you know, being the person that I am, I actually ordered HBO just to see the documentary so I could just talk about it and basically say my opinions on it. Pretty much, I, I find it, I found the, the entire in, the whole thing interesting. Um, she finally revealed the, her daughter's face, Blue Ivy's face, to the world. She's a very pretty baby. You look like her and Jay-Z. Perfect combination. Um, what else went on? Basically showing her performances behind the stage, backstage. You see a couple of her dancers getting cursed out by, I don't know, the guy was a dance director or what, telling them that they had to make sure they had the hat on their head, basically showing how serious it was. It Basically, it's her following herself. Like, she had a, a computer, laptop camera and she's just talking in it. It's kind of like her diary, her journal. She talks about her pregnancy, when she found out she was pregnant. Also, she talks about her miscarriage and what she had had prior to her actually being pregnant with Blue Ivy. And, um, I mean, it, it was touching. I mean, if you are a fan of Beyonce, I think you will learn something from it. Even if you're not a fan of Beyonce, it makes her more humanized and makes people see like, okay, she's just another one of us a little bit. She ain't like another one of us, of course not, but it makes her seem more, you know, humanized and stuff like that. Uh, if you didn't get to see that, some of you guys could have actually seen the Oprah interview that went on at 8 p.m. before the actual show, that um, documentary that went on. And she went, had a one-on-one -on -one with Oprah, and she was talking about, this was right after her Super Bowl halftime, the legendary Super Bowl halftime performance, where it was 100 million people watching worldwide. Um, she was talking to Oprah about the things that she did to prepare. Also, she talked about her father not being her manager anymore. She didn't really go into discussion why her father isn't her manager anymore, but she just said that she wanted to be the boss of her career, and she made the decision to branch off to be able to have more creative input and be able to do things the way that she wants to do it. And she also grasped onto the responsibilities of taking control of her career. Um, the, the basically entire documentary, overall, I mean, if you're into Beyonce, it was like an hour and a half. I, I liked it, 
You know what I mean? I I think it should, it could have been more. I don't know, more exciting. But I mean, she had some exciting points. It was more of a like you know, you see more of the sadder part of Beyonce and everything else. You know, some of the stuff that she's been through and stuff like that. But it was one part where she was talking to Jay Z one on one and basically saying how she felt about Jay Z being her husband, and it was really really nice. And I mean, I think they might be replaying it. I don't know, but if you haven't, you should definitely check it out. It was really really good entertainment. Um, what else been going on in Hot Topics, y'all? So, breaking news. Breaking news. Cassette Michelle is in the hospital. She's been hospitalized. Um, this is very, very, very breaking news. This is brand new. This just happened. Cassette Michelle is in the hospital. She has been rushed to the hospital um, for a ruptured appendix. Uh, if anybody knows who she is, she sings the song, Girl. What is it? I think it's... I think it's girlfriend. I think it's the name of the song. And she she had several hits, and she's a Grammy Award winner. She's only thirty years old. She was in the middle of rehearsing when her she was having abdominal pains. And we rushed to the hospital, couldn't find out she had a ruptured appendix. I guess she had appendicitis and didn't really pay much attention to it in a rupture. So now she's in the hospital. She um wrote on Twitter saying that she will be okay. Um, as a quote, I will read this off the paper. What she says. I adore my fans. Thank you for your prayers and well wishes. I'm going to be just fine. Ouch. <laughs> she wrote ouch, y'all. I ain't right. And soon, I'm trusting trusting the Lord, XO, Chris and Michelle. So, hopefully she'll be okay. You know, I, I'm a fan of her. She won Grammys and everything else. But she's currently going on tour, ironically, with Keisha Cole. She was one of our hot topics a few weeks ago after the Super Bowl incident. <laughs> Talking about Michelle Williams. But um, she's currently going to be on tour. And also, she has a brand new album coming out. Um, she's kicking off her Woman to Woman tour with Keisha Cole's March 28th. And later on this year, she has plans to be releasing a brand new album. Um, it's called Better. This is her fourth solo album, so look out for Chrisette Michelle. And all my well wishes goes out to Chrisette Michelle. Um, let me continue and go into a break. And later on, you know, I have the interview with Beef. Y'all don't want to miss this. Y'all don't want to miss this because this is a one-on-one -on -one with California hip-hop group Beef. And a lot of y'all probably like, who is they? What a, you know what I mean? But you just got to go and check them out there. I have information about them on my Facebook page. Go to Jazzy J, Jasmine Moore Facebook page, and go ahead and click and see their videos um, that they have. They're a pretty big YouTube sensation themselves, and they have a pretty big fan base on the um, West Coast. And they came over here and asked to have interviewed me to help build their fan base on the East Coast. So I think that you guys should just would really, really like it, actually. So I'll be right back. I want to play some music, and then I want to come back. And then I'm going to be going through some more hot topics. Hopefully my hot topic panel will be here around 845. I have a little hot topic panel with a couple of things that's been going on regarding Mary J. Blige. Also, an uh, incident that happened on Facebook, um, a Facebook incident, excuse me, happened with a woman where the police inboxed her on Facebook regarding her son's whereabouts that was missing for a few months. Um, if, ugh, you just got to hear this, but make sure you stay tuned. We'll be right back. Yep, I'm back once again. How everybody doing? You know, we're going to be starting a hot plan or going on soon. Around 8.45-ish, somewhere around there, we're going to be talking about the other hot topics that I was telling you guys about regarding Mary J. Blige, TLC, and also this Facebook drama that's been going on. I'm just going to talk to you about it and tell you guys what exactly happened. And then we'll probably talk about it again on panel to see what everybody else has to say once they get here on the panel later on today. Um... And also, 9 o'clock, don't forget, we have our guest, Beef Up in the House. The interview will be on for you guys to listen to. And also, I'll be playing their song twice today, so you guys can listen to it. We back, um, yeah, we playing the music. Hope you enjoyed that interview with Beef, B-E-E-F-F, -F from Cali. Chicken. That's Lawrence and Q. <laughs> Q. Newbies. Okay, I've been missing you, Lauren. Say hello to people. Go ahead, have your time. Get his time to shine. Hey. How the world doing out there? No response, but it's all good. I'm feeling good, though. You know what I mean? Um, 
I just got done doing the haircut. It's pretty sweet. Yo, I wish I could uh, show everybody. Because this is like my Is it on your phone, the picture? Can we see it? Yes. Oh, yes, you yes. can put it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can put it on the camera. Just show him the picture. He, he's like a renaissance man. He does it all. You know what I'm saying? He make music. If you need... Actually, you need a tiny swag makeup. You call out Lawrence, and he'll cut your hair. He'll make you... <laughs> that was so dumb. Okay, anyways. All right, so we're going to talk about a little bit of hot topics that's been going on. All right. All right, so first thing lined up. This lady find out about the death of her son via Facebook from the police department in Atlanta, Georgia. Q, where you at? You know what? It's about to get real. No, on how earlier we was talking about this story and how they um, how they had to put it into the other box on Facebook. Mm -hmm. That all that is all mysterious and everything. But where or what police agency does that? According to them, it was a. Hold on, I read this entire story earlier. Clayton County Police Department. And where is the Clayton County located? That's located in Georgia. In Georgia. Clayton County, Georgia. So a police, uh, I'm, I'm going to say an officer, contacted this woman after her son had been missing for how about months? I, months? About 20 days, a month. Okay. Okay. Uh, and okay. It, they said that he was killed in his vehicle. He was killed in a car crash. Uh, and she just, now, she just found out 20 days after his death. So she had thought her son was missing. Yeah, and they said they inboxed her on Facebook under an alias name. Why would they? Under an alias name. With a, and with a picture of T.I. and his daughter. They made an alias Facebook page. What was it, what was it the called? The police department? Yeah, the police department had an Wait, alias whoa, whoa, whoa. Facebook page called Misty Hancock Account Profile. With a picture of the rapper T.I. and his daughter at a birthday party. And then... After that, when they inboxed her, because you know, if you inbox somebody, you're not friends, it goes to other boxes. I didn't even know the other box exists. I didn't know. Okay? <laughs> but if, for yeah. most of y'all that don't know, on Facebook, it's your inbox and then it's your other, other box. box. So check, just check it right, right now while we're doing this. And you can see that it's true. Your other box. And the other box is basically <laughs> yeah, the other box. It's the, the other, other box. box for people who don't, who not, not friends, not friend it's not things friend. of that nature. This is what the police department did. They sent her a message saying to contact them at a specific number. It's about her son. Her son died. And if you want to know any information to call, who does that? Why didn't they come that? to her residence and tell her that her son was deceased? They saying, this is a lie. Because I'm going to tell you, me, I feel like it's a lie. They said that they couldn't find her any other type of way to contact her. They said they, they, tried, they, they tried different ways to contact her, to channel and contact her, but they could not contact her. Like now, a I'm trying phone? To, yeah, like a phone. How about, how about riding in a cruiser to her residence? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if her, she, I mean, she obviously had been in contact with the authorities for their son to be reported missing yeah. 20 days ahead of time. So how is it possible for you as the police officers to not follow up on the case in person? As if she reported that her son was missing. And it's not like he was kidnapped or, you know, you know, maybe, you know, gang related, something like that. The man was in a car accident. So for them to not know all this information until 20 days later, that is, follows my mind. Because um, car accidents usually get reported immediately, especially when it's around, like it's in Georgia, like it's a big city. Atlanta's a huge city. How did they know that this was the cops that was doing this? The cops said it was there. So uh, the cops actually The cops told sent a message saying that to, co to contact them, and they had it under an alias name, and she called it, and it was a police department. Wow. Well, and that was a police department um, Facebook page that they was using to do undercover investigations with. This ain't no undercover investigation. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> hey, so this is, that's an undercover investigation. Uh, that's a... Nah, okay, I, I know that a lot of people miss with the communication where people just text well, each other all the time. But this is getting out of control. When it's well, to the point that the police department can't even get words out their mouth to call somebody and tell them that their child is that's the, no, that's just total mis misconduct. Well, some that's, that's wrong. Yeah, that's I was sued. I swear I really was sued. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We have a case. I think there's some fishy stuff going on right now. Mm -hmm. If they're hitting her up through some mysterious page, somebody either snitched and it's probably a big crime scene going on because if they found out they actually snitched, 
to possibly that person would get killed. Because why would you just sneak and do that? You know, it's like, yeah. Yeah, hey. the police But it was a car accident. This thing I don't understand. There's something wrong with this whole entire case. It's probably, Something's missing here. It's probably not a car crash that happened. Or murder. I'm trying to tell you. It's probably a... Uh, what's that? What's that? What's that? Stuff? Um, a scandal going on within the uh, police organization. Because why would you just, like, think about it. You know, it has to be somebody that was trying to be on the safe side. Like, okay, I want to let, I feel oh, the guilt. Yeah, I want to let her. Yeah, I, I want to let her know. But she probably can't, he probably can't tell her the full truth. You know. But Maybe it, her son did die from a uh, car. This is really. But they said it department? really wasn't the police department. They admitted it. They said it was this, us. They yeah. said it, it was them. And they, the reason why they contacted her through Facebook is because they couldn't contact her through the phone or anything else. Totally and they, they gave her the number to the police station and they answered the phone and admitted it was them that wrote her. That's why I don't understand how could the police station do something like this all nonchalant and just be okay with it? Because it's not like just a written report. It was on the news, like on the news. Totally yeah, so it's a video. Like this picture is a video. I'm just like, saying, yeah. it's probably some. It's probably a big scandal going on within inside the police organization but, itself. I don't know. It's messed up, but yeah. I do not know. They probably trying to protect somebody. You know, you never know. Who knows? Not in this society. But that's just my opinion. I, I really. Because at first, like, we were sitting in the room and, like, he was telling me about the story. I'm like, okay, I don't, hear, I don't get what you're saying. Like, I don't understand what you're saying right now. But then he just killed me. Well, y'all just. It hurt me. Like, it just hit me, like, while we was in here. I'm like, wow. But then I, I try to, like, not go against the situation, but have some type of logical argument to it, you know, a little, a little, a little, a little, I want to say ethical appeal or something, you know, yeah. just go against it a little bit, not all the way, but, you know, try to give it some insight. It's crazy. I really just, I mean, we, <laughs> we really to that point where police officers don't even call people and tell them what happened to their family members. They texting people and yeah, and, and bunch of people. Next thing you know, somebody gonna write them a text message and be like, "Sorry, um, we just want to tell you that it already has your son's in a coma." Not, it's not being reported. Yeah, I mean, when it's a report and missing person case and you, you do something like that, something just I don't know, something don't settle well with me. As a, I mean, police officer. All right, so I guess we can roll off of that. Go to the next hot topic. Um, they're reporting that Mary J. Blige is having financial issues, allegedly. Mm. Um, allegedly, Mary J. Blige is recently starting to have financial problems going on. Um, let me read the article. Okay, so Mary J. Blige, beset by financial problems, had noticed a slap on the door of her apartment building for not paying the rent. The senior financial problems. Not paying for rent. A slap on the door. Yeah, a slap on the door. It's a, <laughs> a slap on the door. She it, owns her property, right? It, I, I, I guess you're renting it. Because if you paying rent, if you pay, not paying your rent, that means you don't own it. you renting it. Yeah. So she don't own it. Um, it said here before one one. Mary J. Blige, financial problems, they're worse than what we thought. What, what? thought. Um, the No More Drama Singer reported money problems had gotten so bad she was slapped with a notice on her door of her Tony Upper West Side apartment building after it was discovered that she had rent payment problems last November. Oh, a year ago? Last November. Oh, this, a year oh, ago, this, a couple uh, of months this ago. Past, yeah. yeah. Um, she was talking about like, <laughs> she's going on for a while now. It was for not paying back rent. That's what the re the real estate source says. Rent. Yeah, not paying back rent. She she has millions of records, so I don't believe this. Mary Mary J. Blige. I'm putting it I don't, out there. I don't know. She's not paying rent. She has a net. They said she had a net I mean, worth at one point of of forty five million dollars, and dug herself into a financial hole. New Jersey filed. She again, spent that joint. Filed a nine thousand nine hundred thousand dollar case against the singer. For failing to pay 2.2 <laughs> personal loans. And also her husband, too. I don't know. But they think she got financial problems. I hope everything worked out for Mary J. Blige because she's like one of the greatest singers of our time. I don't know exactly what's going on. 
it's hard. I guess it shows that it's hard out here for everybody. I, mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter whether you're a singer, whether you just work at McDonald's, mm-hmm. financial issues, or something that's stressful. Me. <laughs> they work too fast for me. <laughs> All I wanted was to find some money. All I want to do is buy some money. You know what I mean? <laughs> and go and fry. <laughs> so long, man. Yeah, the one, the the bag fries though too. You know what I'm saying? The side at the bottom, especially that golden pointy one that be that like that, that with that, the edge. Like, so, <laughs> so, I feel like I read a commercial. I love chicken nuggets. Oh, that's like, what is it? Like, like, are we going to McDonald's after this? Oh, advertise, uh, just advertise, yeah, I can't eat McDonald's. This. I'm loving it. <laughs> Another thing, another we ain't get paid for this advertising yeah, either. I don't we like the fact that they got McDonald's in black communities. Hmm? You know, we, we got a high weight of diabetes, high blood pressure. I don't like the fact that they put them in black communities. They don't even have that many McDonald's in Buffalo. Most of them will be in the suburbs. Let me tell you something. Look. Let me tell you something. 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 Because I love the bag fries. I love the chicken nuggets. I even like the fact that y'all have a dollar menu, okay? Burger King ain't got that. So I'd be pissed off when I go to Burger King. A dollar fry every dollar is not a dollar anymore. It's a buck (laughs) twenty-nine. Who said that? It is. Go here. Go. It's always been plus tags. Well, if you get the coupons within the... Um, Why are you talking about... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Next up. Next up. <laughs> Moving on. Mind. All right. So we going to... We're going to talk about our next subject in line. TLC, the girl group TLC, has a movie coming out, y'all. They're coming out. I heard today. that. What's coming out today? No, I'm just talking about it today. Oh. oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, today, just, they released minutes. their she final just, yeah, three lineup. She's dead. <laughs> <laughs> the fi- the three lineup of the three members who will be playing TLC this is final? gets like, the this final is the casting final. Yeah. for T Boz Left Eye and Chili. Get a close up of that. As you can see, that is Kiki Palmer Kiki playing Palmer. Chili. Yeah. Little Mama will be playing Left Eye. Yeah. And who's Drew? Drew. Dora will be Sedora. playing T T T Boz the Boss. <laughs> okay, so right. what it is is a VH1 biopic, basically channeling the entire life. You know how they had the Jacksons five hour series, okay. they had Tina Turner crazy movie, okay. and all that stuff. This is what they're gonna be doing with the team. Finally, TV. another. Now this VH1 is about from, from, the first, from the beginning, all from the when, get all the way to the point when when Left Eye died. So they're yeah. gonna be talking about them getting signed by Babyface, being managed by Pebbles, getting their money stole by Pebbles, Yo, Lisa Face burning is- her boyfriend's house down. Um, T T Boss, yeah, oh. T, they're gonna be filming that part where she burned the house down. Um, T Boss having sickle cell, mm-hmm. um, a whole bunch of stuff, and then all of their hits and everything else. Also, put to the point where they went bankrupt and what exactly what happened behind the scenes when they went bankrupt. So okay. it's about to be deep, y'all. Maybe face screw me this one. Man, first of all, I want to say people of the face record, screw y'all. Nah. Yeah, like, for real. They, they, really, they, they, they did, they did, they did they them did. over and they did Tony yeah. Braxton over. And uh, who else did you try to do? They almost did Usher over, but his mama wasn't having that. Yeah. Nah. I heard about Usher was having problems with them, too. They took mm-hmm. all of their money, y'all. And then, yeah. let me tell you what's been going on. Let me tell you what's been going on lately. Well, <laughs> All right, our microphone's yeah. Um, Let me tell you what's going on lately. They were saying mm-hmm. that they couldn't, you know how they have the singles for every song that they, the major hits in those type of movies. Right. They were trying to keep TLC from using Waterfalls. Who? The people that own the song Waterfalls. Oh, they got the rights to the song? Has the rights to the song. Because, you know, L.A. Reid, he still do all the producing and stuff like that. He was the record executive. So he has the owner rights to that. So Sony Music Group owned the song Waterfalls. Okay. And they were trying to keep Tion and Chili from being able to use it. Dang. So they had to fight in court to get their rights back for them to use their song. That's for their movie. And they're not even a director of it. The director of the movie is the one that directed What's Love Got To Do With. That's why I think it's going to be good. Mm-hmm. The writer, I meant the writer is the writer of What's Love Got To Do With. It, yeah, director. I can't, what? The name of the director. The director directed a, a really, really good film. I can't think of the name of it. It's not on top of my head right now. But um, the director has a, a credential also. So I think this is going to be crazy, y'all. And they start filming next month, March. They said at the beginning of March. Okay. That's what's up, yo. It's crazy. So it should be here for the spring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It should be. Um. Yeah, this spring they're going to be filming it. They're releasing it this year, though. 
Okay. So it's getting filmed throughout spring and summer, and TLC is going on tour again. They're supposed to be going on tour. Hey. Um, hologram Coachella style? Yeah, that's what I was hearing. They might do left that ho- hologram style. For real? Coachella. Yeah. Conspiracy. <laughs> Conspiracy. Conspiracy. But this is going to be interesting because the first one, when they did the cast, I was like, hmm. Hey. But now, with them in costumes and like that, they honestly, they honestly kind of mm-hmm. look like they might be able yeah. to. They might be able to do it. If Angela Bassett can do it, she didn't look like Tina Turner. Angela Bassett can act. Yeah, but Angela Bassett can act. <laughs> now, if, if they can add their acting together, they got their acting the right way. I don't know nothing about Little Mama acting, but these two girls are pretty different. You know, this decent actors. Yeah, really if Little Mama can get her act together, because it's going to be probably hard to really portray left eye role. If she can get her act together, I think this movie's going to be successful. I think, I think Little Mama can oh. pull it together. Yeah. I mean, if you really think about it, they picked her for a reason. You had to do, go through a long process, and that, they auditioned mad girls, the whole thing of girls, and then you got to do screen tests. And you already know the process, like you know what I mean. So mm-hmm. for them to get picked, it shows them that they know what they're doing. T Boz and Chili is the one that's making the movie, so they know who they want, and who they don't want. So you just want to trust them to see how it comes out. Right. So, <clears throat> but I, that's VH1. So make sure y'all tune in and check that out. So. You got me. Is someone out the door? Yeah. Uh huh. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Let me give me. Do your best. How you doing? 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 I'm doing good. I'm doing great. Oh yeah, we over here bugging. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got like a yeah. like about ten more minutes left of the show. We're gonna wrap it up. We'll be back. We're gonna play some more music and then, um, yeah, we'll be right back. Uh-huh. Are you there? <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh, we are. Okay, so yeah, we back. We here. We gonna be wrapping it up very soon. You know, it's not fifty at the end of the hour. All that good stuff right there. We're gonna be giving a shout outs to everybody. Well, off the list of people. Today, we, yesterday night, I played another game of Name That Lyricist, and you know how that game goes. I put down the lyrics, you name the song, and then I play it and all that other stuff and things of that nature. I give you a shout out, and I also give you a song request. See, I done slipped up, and one of the people that got the um, one, I forgot to get their song request, but we got you next Monday. But you get a shout out today. So, we're going to start up off the list. You guys can read off. It's three people. I'll do it. Pass it around to you guys and go off the top of the list. Okay. So we can start from the bottom going up. So we're going to start up from the bottom. Now I'm here. I thought I could split this off. You can just read it. Sitting cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when this video is about to be up, y'all, because this is crazy. I'll work tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to be living in the studio tonight or what my job going to be. Hey. Telling y'all about my personal life. Do so you have a last name? Escalera. Here. Mm. Is it? Yeah, that's their that's their state and yeah. Mm. I don't really know. Cause I was trying to go off the top of the head when I remember. Cause I forgot. I forgot. Mm. Mm. Escalera. All right. All right, so I'm gonna play the music and we're gonna have a good old time doing our final shout outs of the night. So, if you want a shout out, make sure you go ahead and find me on Facebook at Jazzy J Jasmine Moore. Oh, and yeah. we will be getting it going. Oh, shoot, a fire alarm. Okay, well, all right, well, this is the end of the show, y'all. It's a fire alarm going on. I don't know if the house is burning down, seriously. <laughs> shout out to Brittany Davis, shout out to Raven, and shout out to Sarah Weaver. We out this DI. Um, I gotta go. Bye bye. <laughs> you are here live on the connection with the one, the only Jazz J, and I have an interview with the group Beef from California West Coast. Represent. What's happening? Beef and this, you already know. <laughs> and um, if you want to introduce your names and also what your your group name represents. Uh, I'm Bertrand. I'm Evan, and y'all are every freaking female. That's what the beef stands for. And where did you get the name, the concept for the name? Um, it just kind of happened. We just thought about what we were, what we represent to the world, and that's what we, that's what we discovered. 
and you, you know, you're from California, so you've been able to perform around that area. How many areas have you performed in the California area? Oh man, low key, just like up and down the California, you know what I'm saying? Up and down the California coast. Like down to San Diego, all over LA, like the valley, like a little bit north of here, like just mad places, son. We just been all over, the, just spreading the gospel. And what? When did you fit for, first form your group? Like around what year did you form the group? Uh, that would be around like 2009, like the end of 2009, early 2010. We formed like Voltron. And what exactly. would you? What would you define your your genre um, of music like? Well, like I know it's hip hop, but what do you try to de- define your music? What is your purpose of your music? Like, what what do you do? Honestly, we try to we try to really pay homage to just all our influences, which is pretty much the entire world. Like, we try to just we try to make music that encompasses everything. So if you had to name a list of musical influence that even from old school and today that influenced you um, to make music and also to continue making music, who would those artists be? This is in no particular order. Queen, Hall and Oates, Tupac, Gangnam Style, Toby McGuire, and Francis Lloyd Wright. That's different. That's cool. Like, I mean, like you, you pick all types of different type of genre of uh, artists. That's a very interesting. Well, I mean, I think that's important when you're an artist is to also listen to other genres for you to get more influences to be a better artist. You know what I mean? Exactly. Very much so. So, what what is your plans? Like, what is the future for Beef? Like, what what are what's the projects you have lined up for the fans? Uh, well, we got, we got some new everything dropping, like, probably mid-spring, early summer, something like that. We're going to hit them with some videos, some songs, and probably a project or two. But, uh, you know, we, we got some stuff coming up, but it's going to be different. It's going to be different than what we've done, and we just want to keep growing and keep expanding. Evolving. And then like like some black holes. <laughs> cool. And if you had a chance to like, I mean, perform with anybody that's your musical influence, if you had a chance to do a song with any artist, who would you do a song with? Like collaboration with? Oh, right man. now? Yeah, just in just in general. Honestly. Elton John, probably. Like, if we could get in the studio with Elton John, I think we can make some fire, bro. Like, bro, if we got in the studio with Elton John, bro, we would make Benny and the Jets five, Part bro. three, bro. <laughs> part, part five, bro. We would make oh my God, part, bro. part, why? <laughs> <laughs> it would be really crazy. So any other artists that's on the West Coast you want to give a shout out to or that you know that you can mention to uh, the audience to also check out to help to build a fan base over here? For sure, man. Gotta shout out the little bruh man, M-A-double-N, you know what I'm saying, holding it down for West LA. The homie Sean Christopher, you know, Inglewood's hero. And then Fly Guys, representing that Swanson. <laughs> But that's, those are the homies right there. That's the family. You know what I'm saying? That's who we with all the time. And they got the hottest music on, on the coast right now. Okay, and I'm going to go and ask you just to tell a story about, like, you touring and type of favorite moments of uh, performing and favorite places you've been to. Wait, like, favorite place that we've been to, like, as a group? Yeah, favorite place you've been to, like, as a group. Okay. I, I mean, or just a memory. <laughs> I'm just trying to favorite memory is beef. Um, 
Low key, bro. When we got the uh, when we got the article in the LA Times, I was really juiced about that. Oh yeah. And a lot of people saw it, and it made me feel really good about being a rapper. Yeah, that's exciting to finally get your work um, recognized. Hell yeah. a, a big, a big uh, company, you know. That's huge for getting your fan base up. Also, also, last question. Try to like wrap this interview up. Where can the fans that you have right now find your music, and the new fans find your music and your videos and everything else to help support um, Beef and in your many projects? Well, I mean, you can find us on the internet on SoundCloud. That would be soundcloudcom slash Beef B E E F F. And just repeat that one more time for the crowd. SoundCloud.com slash beef, B-E-E-F-F. And so that would have our latest project, Leaders of the Fake World. That's where you can find that. Uh, If you just search beef on YouTube, we got tons of videos, music videos, hiking videos, funny, weird stuff, I don't know. But we're, we're all over YouTube for sure. Or if you search Fly Guys, we're in a lot of their stuff. Um, and you know, we're on Twitter, Eat Beef. That's twitter.com slash Eat Beef. You know what I'm saying? US. At Eat Beef. And you know what I'm saying? You know, we talk back to the people, and we like people, and we love females. And any shout outs you want to give out to anybody that's been supporting you, specifically friends, family, anybody? Um, yeah, shout out to my mom. And uh, shout out to YB. All right. Well, thank you so much again for this interview. I had some technical difficulties the first time, but I'm sure this came, this one came out way smoother. Uh, so right. I'm going to edit it, send you guys the video, and have a good day. Turn up. All right. Got my logs on looking like a doc. Got my logs on looking like a doc. Got my logs on looking like a doc. You bring the army and the navy, little nigga, you can stop me. Got my logs on, got my logs on, got my logs on looking like a doc. Got my logs on, got my logs on, got my logs on, nigga, you can stop me, huh? Step in the room, dead silence, wearing loud colors, vibrant, I resemble a tyrant, hands up, cause it might get violent, don't let the kids watch, cause the way my fit mismatches hip hop, don't get gassed up, you pit stop fast, niggas, wheels of fortune is slowing down like tick, tick, and I look like Tupac Spirit of revolution inside a nigga who rapping But I ain't no thug Shit, that's empirical evolution Cause I ain't gotta die for you to know why I was fly Got my locs on looking like a doc Got my locs on looking like a doc Got my locs on looking like a doc You bring the army and the navy, little nigga, you can stop me Got my locs on, got my locs on Got my locs on looking like a doc Got my locs on, got my locs on on looking like a daffy. I be going out hitting licks as a hobby. Met this girl in a hotel lobby. Said you trying to fuck a goon. She said no, bitch, it's not. Me. I'm just a young fake nigga on his job. Child, a deep with the bras. It's a mob. My lunch lady serving nigga like Denny, bruh. Nigga talk shit, then the nigga gets the Libya. Dictator, she a dick taker. Beating up the block, call the shit a brick breaker. Hard candy dick, bitch, shit a lifesaver. In this bitch and we told the lightsabers, nigga. Huh? I'm a rock star, like more and more. Go out and hell a whore. Rock star, like au revoir. Here today, and gone tomorrow. Got my locs on, looking like a doc. Got my locs on, looking like a doc. Got my locs on, looking like a doc. You bring the army and the navy, little nigga, you can stop me. Got my locs on, got my locs on. Got my locs on, looking like a doc. Got my locs on, got my locs on. Got my locs on, nigga, you can stop me, huh?